Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com. It's September 6, 2021, and today we're going to talk about geoengineering over the Great Barrier Reef, also known as marine cloud brightening. Um, this is uh, fresh off the presses. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. And you can see that on nature.com, August 25th, 2021, can artificially altered clouds save the Great Barrier Reef? Australian scientists are rushing to develop new, new technologies such as ways to block sunlight to help preserve corals in the face of climate change. And uh, this is a controversial topic. Not well understood, so we're going to go through it in great detail. If you're new here, if you're watching this somewhere else, because all of my stuff is Creative Commons, uh, somebody may have downloaded it, uploaded it elsewhere, just go to YouTube and type in Climate Viewer, and you can find both of my channels. Links are right there in the details. And everything I do is free of charge. You can download it. You can do whatever you like to with it. You can support my work by giving a monthly donation on Patreon or a single donation on PayPal or GoFundMe. That's greatly appreciated. So let's get back into the story. These individuals, um, namely uh, Dr. Daniel Harrison from Southern Cross University and the Sydney Institute of Marine Science, have decided that they're going to save the Great Barrier Reef by marine cloud brightening. The idea is pretty simple, that they want to spray sea salt into the sky to make the clouds whiter, and that that will save um, them from global warming and the heat trapping coral bleaching problem that they have. It's a very complicated issue. and It's not well understood. So let's go back in time just a hair and we'll tell the whole story. This is from 2020, April, scientists trial cloud brightening equipment to shade and cool Great Barrier Reef. The ABC News in Australia said Great Barrier Reef coral bleaching to be tackled in cloud brightening experiment. Also April 2020, which um, prompted uh, the next day Southern Cross University to say scientists trial world first cloud brightening technique to protect corals. World first, I think not. Um, we will definitely cover why this is not the world's first cloud brightening experiment, but more on that later on. Looking into the details of the March 25th through 28th, 2020 experiment um, off the coast of Australia, the only published paper is marine cloud brightening proof of concept Study Boosting Coral Abundance on the Great Barrier Reef Challenge Final Report by Daniel P. Harrison. Um, and as you can see, no full text available. Uh, there are 38 pages on this, and this is the only page I've been able to find it on. I have not found a PDF or any peer reviews on this. So apparently um, it's on a need-to-know basis and not for public viewing. Regardless, over here at the ETC group, which is the preeminent anti-geoengineering group on the planet, I would argue, um, geoengineers test, ri test risky planetary engineering scheme in Australia. And um, right about here, I'll uh, scroll down to it. Where is it at? Um, okay, I had it highlighted. Modeling studies show that, for example, if marine cloud brightening was deployed in California, where another testing project is in the works, it could cause droughts in the Amazon. And that's the main problem that we have with this situation, is that if you do geoengineering in one part of the world, it affects the whole world regardless. This, among other reasons, is why 193 countries, which are party to the Convention on Biological Diversity, agreed in 2010 to a moratorium on geoengineering. So 193 countries agreed that outdoor testing of geoengineering should be banned until there's international consensus, governing laws passed, all of those sorts of things. Um, and they're officially violating the UN's uh, agreement on banning geoengineering. Um, that should surprise nobody. 
Um, but regardless, over at the Sydney Institute for Marine Sci- of Marine Science, scientists trial world first cloud brightening technique to protect the reef. Now, I think we can all agree that protecting the Great Barrier Reef is something that is a great idea and should be done. Is this the proper solution? Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think. Watch the whole video before you make your judgment. I'm not going to give you your own ideas. I think that if this resonates with you and you have pretty pretty excellent guts and brains, um, you'll come to your that conclusion on your own. So several videos have been put out about this. Um, back from the original 2020 experiment, um, you know, this this was on the ABC News Australia, um, referencing the article that I talked about earlier. They do an interview with Dr. Harrison, as you can see here. Um, not going to play that one for you. Um, there are other videos, Cloud Brightening Project, April 16, 2020. And then we have this one here because they went back in March of 2021 and then they upgraded the experiment. And I'll let Dr. Harrelson explain that himself. So last year out here, we conducted a proof of concept experiment where we showed that it's technically feasible to pump seawater and atomize it into trillions per second of tiny little seawater droplets, which in theory can go on to help brighten clouds and cool the reef. This year, what we're really interested in looking at is the behavior of that plume of sea salt droplets as it drifts away from the boat. There's a few critical questions around that. How many of those droplets make it up to cloud height? And how does the atmospheric turbulence and the winds spread those droplets? And these questions will help us to design a system for the future that may be able to work over the whole reef. This fieldwork mission has several components. Uh, One of the components is to collect background atmospheric data. So we have a whole lab set up on the ship that's sampling air from up at the front of the boat, the wind, before it hits the boat. And we're looking at all of the background properties of particles that are naturally floating around in the air out here on the reef. Another part further back on the ship is the cloud brightening prototype. And it's Mark II this year. So it's producing around twice as many droplets as last year. And we're very interested in, in how those droplets are spreading through the atmosphere. So we have a big focus this year on using drones as sampling platforms to measure the plume, not just in a horizontal dimension, but also in a vertical dimension. So one of the great advances that we've made from last year is, is really our sampling platforms. So the boat that we're using for sampling downwind is now larger and much more capable, and we're actually able to launch drones and retrieve drones off of that boat. As well as being important to the indigenous people of Australia, we realise it's important to all Australians. We love the coast, we love our water. Let's look after it together. Cloud brightening is just one of a whole suite of ideas that we're examining in the reef restoration and adaptation program. And the overarching goal of all of this research is to look into all of the possible ways we can think of that we might be able to help the reef to survive climate change. And that is brought to you by all these lovely individuals listed here. So all of this is, of course, linked in, uh, they have another video here. It's very short, also released from um, August 2021. As you can see here, this video only has 328 views on it. And I have yet to comment. So I'm going to leave that to one of you beautiful climate viewers to go over there and let them know what what you're summary of everything that I'm about to um, tell you is what's your opinion? Go let them know. Um, Let's see how long those comments stay available. Anyway, so I have all of this combined into a playlist on my Jim Lee um, YouTube channel where you can see the Silver Lining Project Marine Cloud Brightening. And it goes all the way back to its inception with John Latham in the year 2000 to um, his idea of these uh, salt pumping boats to brighten clouds. And uh, Dr. Stephen Salter, who also worked with him in a TED talk, um, up to some of the presentations from the weather modification conferences at uh, the American Meteorological Society. And finally, the four videos that I just showed you are also now in the playlist. So all of those will be in one place. All of the, the links that you're watching in this video will be in the details. 
So feel free to dig into those after the video. Um, and of course, I wrote about this back in October 9th of 2013, the Silver Lining Project Cloud Making Boats, Ocean Pumps to Halt Hurricanes. And you can actually see this is from the BBC. This video is also on the list. Um, Anti-global warming clouds. Um, and there's a little 3D animation of what the boat would actually look like. And uh, in 2017, uh, the chemtrail debate turned to aqua trails. And I was like, what is this new term? So, of course, I had to unscrew the difference between aqua trails, pollution of the sea, ship tracks, and marine cloud brightening, which I think I did very well. Um, but you can see here a schematic of what the silver lining project boats were supposed to be, um, what they should look like, and how they should operate. And what you generally see here is three turbines, similar to what's being used in Australia right now, that are vertically oriented to spray the sea salt up into the clouds. And you can see little people on here, but these boats were eventually designed to be operated as drones in fleets of up to a thousand boats and just constantly create clouds over the Pacific Ocean uh, to cool the planet, to reflect sunlight back into space uh, with whiter, brighter clouds. The Silver Lining Project, however, uh, website was deleted from the internet um, circa 2010. And of course, I went to my favorite space on the internet, archive.org, on the Wayback way Machine, and found this page, uh, silverliningproj.org. And you can see who was involved, because names and addresses are what I mainly focus on. Um, because they're the most useful. This research is currently undertaken by distinguished scientists and engineers at Manchester University, Leeds University, NCAR, Pacific Northwest National Lab. Purdue, I got a fly attacking me. I'm in South Carolina, people. Um, Purdue University, University of Washington, and the University of Edinburgh. So I wanted to see where this had gone to. And lo and behold, what do you got? We have the Marine Cloud Project um, right here at mcbproject.org. And what you find very quickly is these are the exact same people, University of Washington, Pacific Northwest National Lab. Um, and you go to their collaborator page, which you will see is, of course, University of Washington, Washington Pacific Northwest National Lab, um, and, you know, National Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR, uh, the University of Manchester. So these are all the same individuals that were invested in um, the Silver Lining Project. So I was interested to see even further that not just that, um, that there's actually a silverlining.ngo. And I said, well, that's mighty coincidental. Don't you think so? I think so. And when I realized that, you know, of course, Silver Lining Project, uh, silverlining.ngo is talking about climate change, and I really couldn't find any mention of geoengineering on here, um, that raised some red flags for me. So what I did was do a little digging and wouldn't you know it, um, just like the Silver Lining Project, the Marine Cloud Brightening Project, which is supposedly what the ETC group is referring to operating off the coast of California, um, their Twitter feed died back in 2018. It was uh, created February 2015. And the last post is May 8, 2018. And what do you see? You see Kelly Wasner on there. And I said, well, that's mighty interesting. Um, I swear, I've got a fly that wants to be a star today. I'm going to make you a star by ninja slapping you. Um, and what do you see is planetary intensive care. This fly. Gotcha. Planetary intensive care reflecting sunlight to cool the climate. So, 
Speaker named Kelly Wozner, Principal Director of the Marine Cloud Brightening Project, and also the Executive Director of Silver Lining. Not a coincidence, so the Silver Lining Project was split into two different websites now. It's silverlining.ngo and mcbproject.org. All the same thing from way back in the day, the Silver Lining Project is alive and kicking. And that's why we say over at the weather modifi- weathermodificationhistory.com, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And I did mention multiple times during this video that this is not the first cloud brightening experiment to occur because there was the Eastern Pacific Emitted Aerosol Cloud Experiment in February of 2011. Um, some details on that here. And I have three references from Lynn Russell on this. And as you can see by the photo, same idea, same thing, 2011. A boat called the Point Sur is spraying out plumes of uh, chemicals made by engine oil. Um, and they have atmospheric sensors, um, aerosol sensors, light sensors. Um, to see how much sunlight they're blocking with their artificial clouds and cloud brightening. Um, This was in addition to the GOES plus A train of satellites that circle the planet. Um, And this is the plane um, that was doing the testing. So big time project. This was the first uh, marine cloud brightening project that I know of that occurred. If you know of any others, please let me know. I'll update the timeline. Uh, But that is your first experiment. When you go to the Scripps Institution for Oceanography, uh, no mention of brightening. I typed in brighten and I got zero results. Just, uh, you know, an educational rundown of how this was just an aerosol experiment. Um, But then you come over here to the National Academy of Engineering and who other than Lynn Russell um, in 2012 said, offsetting climate change by engineering air pollution to brighten clouds. So if you flip through this and you see, oh, well, there's a whole lot of mentioning of brightening going on here. And uh, you flip to right here um, on this one, recent modeling, and then new experimental evidence of cloud brightening. To learn more about cloud physical process that aerosol cloud radiation interactions, we designed the Eastern Pacific Emitted Aerosol Cloud Experiment, EPs 2011. Um, And that is the first cloud brightening project, as I said, Um, because, you know, aerosol cloud interaction are widely held to be the largest single source of uncertainty in climate model projections and future radiative forcing due to increasing anthropogenic emissions. Uh, Eastern Pacific Emitted Aerosol Cloud Experiment. So this is this was published in 2013. We're all the way at 2020 doing uh, these Great Barrier Reef experiments. And of course, uh, this paper as well mentions ship tracks and you can see here uh, this thing was like number seven ship tracks right here and of course they talk about you know the effect of ship tracks or anomalous cloud lines created by international shipping um, which is pretty much doing the same thing it's geoengineering via pollution and if you want to know more about that, you can dig in. I have several articles on ship tracks. Ship tracks, lightning control, and chaff, March 2019. Ship tracks, bunker fuel, dirty clouds, and blatant lies. And as you can see here, shipping has a pollution problem. Bunker fuel for the world's shipping fleets makes up just 7% of the world's transport oil demand. Yet, it generates 90% of the sector's sulfur emissions. For example, in just one day, one cruise ship emits as much particulate as 1 million cars. And in fact, the shipping industry, seven of the largest ships, frigates, whatever you want to call them, 
seven of these ships produce more CO2 than every single car on the planet. The problem is that they call it accidental geoengineering when it's ship tracks. Um, with marine cloud brightening, it's pretty clear it's intentional geoengineering. So ship tracks would be the largest accidental geoengineering um, project, program, or pollution, choose your, your um, adjective, uh, followed by plane farts. Because planes do the exact same thing that ships do. They create artificial clouds, effects unknown. But most people want to say, well, they're cooling the planet. Um, that is a question that remains to be seen. And uh, as MIT University put it, we're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming. Um, so if you want to know a lot about this whole topic of accidental geoengineering with ship tracks and contrails, please read this article. I wrote it in 2018. All the links will be in the details, but this is certainly not a world first cloud brightening um, technique test experiment, outdoor um, experiment. Um, certainly won't be the last. They did it um, over the Great Barrier Reef in 2020. They did it in 2021, and they intend on going back in 2022. Despite the Convention on Biological Diversity's ban on outdoor geoengineering experiments, additional geoengineering um, cloud brightening experiments are going on, on the coast of California from the Marine Cloud Brightening Project. And you can find out many more of these from the ETC group at geoengineeringmonitor.org. They have a map there of current geoengineering projects all over the world. Um, additional maps can be found at climateviewer.org on Climate Viewer Maps. You can look at all of the weather modification projects and geoengineering projects from around the world. I hope this has been informative for you. Um, Please leave me a comment. What do you think now that you know the whole story from the Silver Lining Project to the E-Piece to the current Great Barrier Reef? Do you think that marine cloud brightening is a, a proper solution given all of the unknowns um, to save the Great Barrier Reef? I think we can all agree that saving the Great Barrier Reef is a noble cause and is necessary. Is this the way to do it? Let me know in the comments. Please leave a like if this uh, video resonates with you. Just gently smush that button. I would appreciate it. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the Climate Viewer channel. Um, trying to, I'm going to be making all my videos over here now. Um, and, you know, do your part. Sharing is caring. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so with that being said, information is power. With power comes great responsibilities. So please use this video. Whether you download it, remix it, put it wherever you like um, to attack ideas, not people. Love you, mean it.